1863 was a pivotal year in the Civil War. Hundreds of thousands of Americans were killed in the bloody conflict that divided the nation. The battles and political divisiveness that occurred during this year changed the course of the Civil War and American history. To the citizens of our nation, I have something of the utmost importance to declare. I decree that on the first day of January, in the year of our Lord, 1863, all persons held as slaves within any state or designated part of a state, the people whereof shall then be in rebellion against the United States, shall be then, thenceforward and forever free. And the executive government of the United States, including the military and naval authority thereof, will recognize and maintain the freedom of such persons, and will do no act or act to repress such persons, or any of them. In effort, in the any efforts they make, make for their actual freedom. Hey. Yes, father. Where's your sister? So, why did you bring us here? That proclamation that Lincoln has just sent out is just proof that the Confederacy was right to secede. If we had stayed in that darn Union. That man would have destroyed our economy and way of life. Lincoln would have abolished slavery and doomed us all. I fully support what President Lincoln has declared with this proclamation. However, I'm scared. The South will get angry. The president can go to war with them, but taking away their slaves is detrimental to their society, as they are vital to the southern economy. I disagree. You are right about fully supporting the president with what he has declared. Those slaves have endured pain for generations at a time. This was the right move. President Lincoln knows what he is doing. I guess so. However, if the Africans are getting more rights, why aren't women? We deserve rights too. I agree. Change must happen. You are now free, and you may now enlist in the military. Really? Yes. May the Union prevail! After the Emancipation Proclamation, 3.1 million of 4 million slaves were freed, and yet more freedom awaits these slaves. After Virginia voted to secede from the Union, many West Virginians disagreed with the decision. What in tarnation! Virginia voted to secede from the Union and join that cursed Confederacy. I can't believe this. The Eastern slaveholders are hogging all the power. They're not even listening to any of the West demands. Something must be done. On June 20th, 1863, West Virginia officially joined the Union. The war began as Grant and his men attacked Pittsburgh, a direct assault with intent to take over the state. The South held strong, but Confederate supplies began to run low. Grant had surrounded the city and cut off supply lines, while continuously firing upon Vicksburg. The people of the village were starving and tired and were anxious for the siege to end, to escape the terrible conditions they were living in. How will we survive like this? We are living off of rats and dogs, and we have no food, clean water, and medicine coming in. What will we do? Even the soldiers are being pushed to starvation. With Papa gone, we're out of money. Don't worry, Papa will come back and save us. Will he? By the 44th day, with no supplies coming into town, Pemberton surrendered to Grant on July 4th. General Pemberton, I do not wish to cause your people suffering. You have run out of supplies and no more will come, as we have cut off your supply lines. You have nowhere to go. The game is up. Surrender now and food will be sent to you immediately to your soldiers and citizens of Vicksburg. Please take some time to think about this, and I look forward to hearing back from you. Thank you for the cooperation. As the two armies advanced on each other, General George G. Meade and Robert E. Lee began to plan for the battle. We are honored to have you here today, General Meade. It's my pleasure. How do you feel about your chances of winning the battle? 
It will be difficult, but I think we can pull out a victory. The Union will prevail. What is your strategy for coming out with this victory? We will defend Cemetery Ridge, Culp's Hill, and Little Round Top with all of our might. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. It is an honor to be speaking with you today, General Lee. Thank you for having me. How do you feel about your chances of winning the battle? I'm confident that we will win this battle. This will be a famous victory for the Confederacy. What is your plan to make sure this happens? After a great victory over Union forces at Chancellorsville, I will march my army into Pennsylvania and claim victory once again. Thank you, Pierre. celebrated over the grand victory and confederates thought of it as a failed plan and a massive disaster. What an amazing day. Two major battles have just been won by the Union. And to top it off, they occurred on the same day, July 4th. The, the tide of war is turning. Surely we must win this war against the confederacy. I'm so sad. My poor father. He worked so hard for the confederates to achieve victory but the darn Union keeps beating them. We have had two major losses, Gettysburg and Vicksburg, and now my father is dead. Now that the Union has won this, there's no chance we will win. The Battle of Gettysburg has definitely turned the tide, tides of this war. The Battle of Gettysburg was the bloodiest battle of the Civil War, with over 20,000 casualties on both sides. The victory made Union morale soar, and Robert E. Lee offered his resignation to President Jefferson Davis, who refused. At the dedication ceremony for a cemetery for the late soldiers, President Lincoln was asked to give a eulogy. The 272-word speech became Lincoln's most famous speech and is widely considered as one of the greatest American speeches of all time. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation, or any nation, so conceived and so dedicated, can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that the nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it, far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little know nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who have fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from the honor that we take increased devotion to that cause which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth. The reactions to the Gettysburg Address were mixed. Northerners hailed it as a classic work of American origin, while Southerners viewed it as too short and disrespectful to the fallen soldiers. Here's what one we pass over the silly remarks of the president. For the credit of the nation, we are willing that the veil of oblivion shall be dropped over them and that they shall no more be repeated or thought of. God has bestowed his blessings on President Lincoln. His views on slavery and his belief that all men are equal show true character and faith. The Union will emerge victorious from this war. And as the president said, the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth.